welcome to another video. Uh, I'm currently at Warwick Services on Bank Holiday Friday of the Jubilee weekend on my way to Anglesey. I've just done 140 miles from home to here and it's about another, I think, 200 to go. Picked up a KFC, jump back in the van and get up to Anglesey before the evening, before it gets too late. I should explain that this weekend I'm going it alone because my mate and his missus are not accompanying me to Anglesey. They can't be bothered. They're um, doing other stuff this weekend. So I'm on my Todd. And I'm going to do a bit more filming than I usually do. Not just eating food, but motorbike stuff and generally what a race weekend is like. Now at Chester Services, it is still daylight, which is good. Um, interesting stain on the back of the van, which had me worried for a minute. It looks like something's blown up because the whole thing is covered in oil. And yeah, something did blow up, but it wasn't me. It was a Ford Mondeo on the M6, and I think it blew a rod. Basically, clouds of oil came out of the back, peppered my van with shit, covered it in oil. Um, yeah, exciting. Just arrived. 366 miles and I think it's about quarter to ten. I left at half three so not bad. It's actually quite quiet. I looked at the entry list and there's a hell of a lot of FZ 600s in my races but the paddock seems quite quiet so I don't know what the turnout is for the rest of the classes. Most importantly I got here while the bar is still open. Excellent. I'm going to get, get the bike out of the back of the van uh, so I don't have to do it tomorrow morning. That gives me more room to kick back and relax. Bike unloaded, tucked around there. I've moved the van because there was a space right next to the scrutineering bay, which will save me walking tomorrow. Um, the only modification to my van since last time has been a new doormat. That was high time, I had something better than cardboard. So this is what it's like living the life of a motorcycle racer, a failed one, or at the start of the career, bike is outside, I'm in bed. Uh, got my sci-fi book I can't remember where I was in this but we should find out soon I've got to get up early tomorrow to do sign on and scrutiny and all that crap because ordinarily I'd try and do it on the Friday but I uh, got here too late so I have to do it tomorrow morning <laughs> good night wow ankle seat isn't usually like this it's windy but it's dry and it's sunny. It's pretty cool. Bike unveiled, transponder can go on. Let's stay there all weekend and go to the scrutineering bay. Bike past scrutineering, it's now about eight, not even that, quarter to eight. I've got a coffee, some cook. I'm gonna chill out for a bit and then I'll go get my clothing scrutineered and then uh, not a lot else to do until noise test of racing. Mm, there's a lot of waiting around on race days, especially if, like me, you only do four races out of the weekend. So there ain't a lot to do until about 10 o'clock now. So I will just kick back, relax, read my book, drink coffee, wander around the paddock looking at bikes. Strangely, the wind feels like it's coming from the opposite direction. It should because the sea is over there, but the wind is going. So that's an odd one. Uh, yeah, I love this place over there. You can see the Lynn Peninsula and maybe the Snowdown. But although this track is 360 miles from home, 
and it's a long, long old way, especially in my sort of van. It's well worth it, especially if the weather is like this. This is a lovely machine. The level of detail some people go to and the quality of the restorations. That is such a nice bike. Incidentally, the P signifies parade, which means it will be out on track, but it won't be in timed races. It will be driven hard, but not against the clock. First of today's dramas, I turned up to the assembly area to go out for the first practice. And there was a bit of smoke coming off the exhaust. And I thought that that was just the result of fork oil having dropped on the inside of the manifold when I did the fork springs. They told me, no, it's a leak from your oil fill up. I'm not actually convinced it is, because that's a new-ish seal in there. And I don't know whether I actually had an oil leak or not. Be the way to appease them, I'm cleaning it all up. I'm going to fit a new seal to that. Put oil back in it and hopefully get out for my actual race. Although I will now start at the back of the grid. But that doesn't really matter, because, you know, I'm towards the back of the grid anyway. It's an excuse to fit a nice filter and bring that go back together. Exhaust can go back on and hopefully no leaks. Bike is back together. It has been back to scrutineering and signed off. So that's good. It isn't actually raining. I'm just hiding in the van because it's windy and then getting a bit cold. And it's lunchtime, so I have some prime cuts from Tesco. Sauce that I've stolen from motorway services around the country some cheese and some lettuce in a bag down there somewhere so i'm gonna have my lunch chill out for a bit and then hopefully start my first race this afternoon that thing is going absolutely mental when a gust comes i swear it's gonna break it's half two it's just started raining i still haven't been out on track yet um, i haven't actually missed the race it's just the way the timing of the day is going so I had a little nap instead and I've just woke up to the rain. Never mind, it's not too bad yet. some accident damage basically i went into rocket and then crashed so i have scuffed up and knackered the fairing broken the mid fairing broken the near side engine cover snapped the gear select lever ground off the peg dented the fuel tank ground off the clutch lever handlebar end, distorted the handlebars, scuffed up the fairing. So I've got a couple of hours, oh and I broke the screen as well, so I've got a couple of hours to fix all that and I also want to modify my front suspension because I think that's part of the reason I fell off because there's literally no sag. I adjusted this, well I put new springs in and basically there's no front suspension so when I brake it just throws all force through the front tyre and threw me off. I should have between 20 and 30 millimetres of sag, that being how much it compresses when I get on it. And at the moment, there's about eight millimetres. So it's very, very heavy on the preload. So that needs um, adjusting. Anyway, I'll get my tools out and start fixing it. I did have a sneaking suspicion I would crash again. So I've bought spare rear sets. So that can go on in replace of that one. What I need to check is whether those bolts are bent. That one looks like it might be, in which case I need to go bolt shopping or try and straighten it. That's the result. The two bolts I thought had bent haven't. Either that plate had bent or it's just manufactured wonky. So either way, that's a win for me. That can go on and we're done. Okay, we have new foot peg there, 
old engine cover off on these turns out that the offside cover is the same as the near side apart from the writing so uh shove that on put a bolt through there to hold the top of the fairing just straighten the handlebars i need to change a clutch lever but i have a brand new one and then it's just tidy up these fairings and then we should be good to go back to scrutineer and get it checked over then i can get a pass sticker so i can go racing again well, I don't know how long that's taken, but it is back together and I'm going to head back to scrutineering and see if it can go through. Okay, pulled the caps off, got the spacer out, I'm going to chop that down. Um, I've done a bit of reading online, it says you can have these about 110, so that's potentially quite a lot of this. But I'm going to start at 50 and see what that feels like. Okay, bike has been tinkered with. I've replaced the spacers and the front end is a bit softer, so hopefully it doesn't bump me off again tomorrow. Now it's barbecue time. So I've got my council barbecue tray and a blow torch. That's easier than a match, that's for sure. Hopefully, 20 minutes time, we can cook some burgers. Check that out for a sky. I was going to try and walk up there and get some nice footage, but I'm finding it very hard to walk at the moment after having fallen off because my leg is fucked. So I'm trying to keep it moving so that it doesn't seize up completely, but getting up tomorrow morning might be interesting because it will be very stiff. It's a bit scuffed. You can't really see the bruise that's growing up there. Not good. Oh, my alarm's just gone off after an uncomfortable night sleep with bruised bits and pieces. And I don't know whether you can hear this on the microphone, but that sounds like rain, lots of rain. So I don't even know if there's going to be racing first thing today. If it's very wet, they might not run. This is proper rain now. I'm staying in bed. Well, I've ventured outside to get a coffee. As wet as I thought, so there's a chance we'll just carry on with the race program as we normal. We shall see. Well, while it's pissing miserable, I thought I'd take the opportunity to stitch up some of the holes that were created yesterday. This suit has actually passed scrutineering because the damage is only through the top layer, it doesn't go right the way through to my skin. So I don't need to do this, but I thought I would because I haven't got anything else to do. So I have my needle and thread and I'm just going to hash a whole load of stitches through there and gob a whole load of super glue over the top afterwards. Well, it's far from pretty, but it's stitched up and that is better than nothing. It's still raining, it's about half eight. I've not heard any tannoy announcements, but it wouldn't surprise me if racing was delayed. Well, that was most fun. Just did a race. Um, it's not raining now, but of course the track is wet. There are bits that are very wet and there are bits that are extremely greasy. There's no dry bits yet, but yeah, went out, didn't crash, all good. Well, it's miserable and raining outside, but it's okay, because I'm in here and I've got a bacon and egg sandwich and a coffee and my radio. So all is good. Let's go and have a look from pit lane. So that race just gone was race 25. Race 26 is next, obviously, and I'm out after that. So I'm gonna go put my leathers on, warm up a bit, uh, and 
get the bike warm. It's still raining, it's just not proper wet rain, it's kind of spitty, dribbly rain. Not the way I intended on doing a video, but we have... Legs shouldn't look like that. Collarbone. No idea if that was pointing the right way, but collarbone shouldn't look like that. Left knee I already knew about, but that's okay. But yeah, leg and collarbone. Not good. more serious uh oh x-rays not good okay it's been exactly six days since i crashed my legs now look like this got some still pretty impressive lump there bruising right the way down to my ankle so it looks like something out of a zombie movie um, interesting yellow hue going on then this leg bruised all the way down the inside around the back as well knee is pretty much okay now I can wander around in fact I went for quite a long walk today to test it all out I'm gonna try and film my shoulder now I don't know whether you can see that, but I can basically move that arm. It does hurt, but I don't want to leave the strapping on too much longer. I want it to just start healing as much as it can, and it probably won't heal if I'm not testing it. Just in case that didn't show up, I've put the camera on facing me mode. Basically, some pretty good bruising across the top. Um, annoyingly, you can see the collarbone down here is straight. This one has a horrible lump and bump in it. Right there. And Annoyingly, I think the bones have snapped and then set too short, so this shoulder is now a funny angle. But reading online, hopefully that will correct over the months and years as it all heals up again and maybe need a bit of physio. But six days in, I can kind of mostly lift this arm and do stuff with it, which is pretty impressive really. So anyway, that's the end of the video. Hopefully I'll be back racing soon.